Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to be uh, doing my weekly reading wrap up. So last week I managed to fit in six books. I did really well. Um, most of I would well, not, not most of them. It was half and half. Half middle grade and half adult. <laughs> so I did really good. Uh, one I'd been working on for a while, so I only had like the last bit to finish it out. But uh, other than that, yeah, I did really good. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the ebook that I read, which is um, My Vampire vs. Your Werewolf by Paul Tobin. I gave this one 3.5 stars, 3 stars on Goodreads. I was a little disappointed in this one. And I read this one with my friend Barb, and we both kind of had the same ideas about it and everything. But I read a ton of middle grade, and I read a lot of middle grade that are put in, like, dangerous situations and things like that. But the book still manages to feel middle grade, and it's a little easy to suspend your disbelief and things like that. But uh, with this one, it felt more like an adult book with kids in it. It just, I don't know, felt like we were reading about miniature adults or whatever at times. So I think maybe it's just the writing style of this one just didn't work for me. And, uh, yeah, I was a little disappointed. So it's, I mean, it starts off, it throws you right into the story for one thing. Uh, there's no, like, back, hardly any backstory or anything. Uh, you just get thrown in. The kid, there's two kids. I was thinking at the time that they were probably about 12, maybe 13 or whatever. But no, they're like nine. <laughs> But they're hunting a vampire, and they're breaking into, like, this crypt where they know it. this vampire lives. It's a very scary kind of situation. They're going in there, just the two of them, no adults, going to break into this place and going to capture a vampire so that they can have this vampire battle a werewolf. And then after that, you have the kids that are doing the uh, same thing by finding this werewolf. You find out that the only reason that these creatures don't attack them is because they have some kind of a medallion that has been made by witches or whatever. And so you you get the medallion and the medallion has like, I guess, whatever it's supposed to have for like the vampire, the werewolf, whatever. And that is how you can control them when they start to like think they're going to eat you. You can throw it up here and all is well and everything and so that's kind of how it starts off so you're like you know what in the world's going on you felt like you're thrown right in the middle of something and you have no clue what's going on and it doesn't really get any better from that you know that the vampire and the werewolf are going to fight in the epic battle it mentions at certain times something about like their mental health and things like that but it doesn't really elaborate on anything you don't really know why um what kind of a world are they in where uh all these creatures live in these different places and they're they seem to be kind of locked up and things like that and so you know why are they now allowed to battle each other and when i say battle i mean they tear up this town at the end of the story i it, it it's just crazy i mean the the battle is a real battle and you've got these kids in the middle of all this and you've got two of like the most iconic creatures battling it out at the end or whatever i mean it's it was it was crazy um and it was pretty boring up until about the 50 55 percent of the book when the battling is about to happen and about to start and it starts to pick up and then about 60 percent on its non-stop action battle where I guess is where the epic horror part is supposed to be, but this is supposed to be the first book in an epic horror, and I thought it was a little bit more of an epic failure when it comes to that. There are some spooky parts, and I can see that maybe kids may get a little bit spooked out at, during the battle part and things like that, but other than that, it really wasn't that much of a, a horror. I've read spookier middle grade horror, we'll just put it that way, and yeah, I just felt like I didn't get a lot of... Um, background information on why we have these two creatures going to battle it out at each other. It had kind of a little bit of a, a sappy ending, I, I would say. For this epic battle, it had a little bit of a, a kind of a weird out of place ending that was kind of funny, but it was still good. I mean, it's a middle grade book, so you kind of expect it to like probably end that way 
and everything. But yeah, overall, I was just a little disappointed. So the next one, I'm hoping maybe we'll get a little bit more information on why all this is happening all of a sudden. You do find out, like, you know who's going to be battling next. Or whatever and stuff like that which I fit I think is a really odd combination for battles but I am kind of curious to see you know how things are gonna progress um, the kids that are battling their trainers and they have uh, aspirations of doing bigger and better things of becoming a warden or uh, they get um, oh. come on brain they get like a wish or whatever and like one of them wants to be a witch or a warlock or something and so because they have certain reasons around it and things like that but yeah I, i'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen but at the same time I, I may not be so eager to rush out and get the next one to read or whatever and so it could probably you know be something that i will get to eventually whenever it comes out but yeah i was i was a little let down the next one I um, listened to was uh, Witch Slapped by Daniel Garrett. Um, I needed this one for the Everbloom Academy readathon that I'm doing because I needed a magic based one. And so I picked this one. It's the third book in the Beechwood, Beechwood Harbor mystery series. It's a cozy mystery series, but I'm going to say straight up if you don't like a lot of paranormal stuff in your books you're not going to like this one because it is about Holly who is a witch and she has been on probation throughout the books and she has been sent to Beach Harbor or Beachwood Harbor um, because she is on probation and everything because she was practicing magic without a license like making potions and stuff you have to have a license for that evidently I would have known and uh, she doesn't have one. <laughs> and there's some things in her family, which is why she, they won't ever let her have one, kind of. So uh, she kind of does things, you know, behind their backs or whatever. But it's gotten her in trouble in the past. And so now she's here and she lives with a werewolf and a vampire and a ghost. And they're all here because of some reasons and everything. And... They live among humans, but humans don't know that they exist, and they try to keep it that way, and they are looked after and and everything. Well, they have a new person coming in, and she finds out that, I want to say his name is Harvey, but I'm not 100% sure, but he's a hobgoblin, and he's, like, over her case and everything. So she's like, well, great. He um, probably knows that I've been doing things that I'm not supposed to, and he's going to come, he's going to arrest me, he's going to take me away, and all that kind of good stuff. But she also has a friend, Nick, who is a private investigator, and he's a human, and she helps him with his investigation sometimes. And she was doing that in this one. And so besides the paranormal stuff that's going on, you do have the murder mystery, which is Nick's client's uh, husband is murdered and everything. And it looks like maybe vampires are involved. And so she's really wanting to kind of get into this to not only um, make sure that nobody knows that those kind of things exist, but she also wants to keep her friend Nick from getting hurt. And so, that's the murder mystery part and everything. Um, she does get herself into some trouble on both ends of the spectrum, I guess, you know, with, uh, with her human friend. And not only that, but with, you know, the paranormal stuff that's going on. And so, yeah, I thought it was, it was fine. It was cute. Uh, I give four stars. I will probably be trying to continue on with the series now that I've kind of got it more fresh in my head. It'd been a while since I read the first two, and so it was a good thing that it kind of gave me a little bit of a refresher on some things where I would have done forgot. I do think that it seems like the author's trying to do a tiny bit of a love triangle. Um, not so much with, like, that the lady knows it, but, like, Nick, her friend, you can kind of tell he kind of likes her, and she has the, her boyfriend who is the werewolf and so it's like uh let's not do that please so hopefully that doesn't go anywhere but yeah so if you like paranormal and you think it sounds like i it's it's not a bad series so you, know, you should give it a try and so then the next one was uh skandar and the chaos trials by af stedman and this is the third book in the skandar series and it 
is kind of your basic run-of-the-mill fantasy. Um, you got the kid, Skandar, who in the first one, he's wanting to ride unicorns, him and his sister both, but they had never gotten accepted into being able to go, and uh, you have to take a test, and then you get to go to the hatchery, and if you can open the hatchery door, then and stuff, you can go into the hatchery, you can find your unicorn, there's eggs in there, and you're there, and when it hatches, you bond with them. Each, there are different elemental, like, magics and things like that, and everything, but there's one magic that nobody has had in a long time because it is deemed bad and forbidden, and that's spirit magic, and, well, of course, Skandar gets snuck into the place, and everything where he bonds with a spirit wielding unicorn and he has spirit magic and so of course you know it's kind of like that whole like trope of you know he's the one kid you know that finally has this magic that nobody else has had you find out why nobody else has had it later on <laughs> and everything but yeah but you know so it's kind of a run of mill fantasy really for me and like he's in like this school now learning how to control his unicorn and everything and so this is the third book so they're in the third year and there are these things called the chaos trials that they have to go through and you have your uh, your team and everything and they have to get these uh, you have to get the gems like of all the different like elements and everything and they have to everybody has to have one at the end if you don't have one then uh, you get to be a nomad and nobody wants to be a nomad so <laughs> nobody wants to be a nomad and everything but yeah you so you've got a lot of things going on obviously i can't really say a whole lot about some of the other things that are going on because it would be spoilers and everything but yeah so it, it's cute series uh if you if you like you know amari and the knight brothers um you know harry potter any of those kind of things you're going to enjoy this series i think and so yeah i think there's going to be two more in the series maybe i'm not quite sure there could be one out now and I don't know it, or it's coming out. I'm not sure. But I'll get to it whenever. Okay, so the next one I have is Summer Night by Jim Butcher. It is the fourth book in the Dresden File. This is my continuation of a reread that I'm doing with Amy and my friend Barb. And so, yeah. We've got Harry Dresden. I love him. He doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut sometimes, so he's always in trouble. And... Because of some things that happened in the last one, he's in trouble with the Red Court vampires. But he's also in trouble with the wizards, the high up wizard guys, and the White Council, I think it's called. And um, then he gets himself mixed up in some fairy business. And so he's got Mab and the Winter Night, and, or the Summer Night and the Winter... I don't know. What is it? Winter Fairy, Winter... I don't know. Anyway. Big battles ensue. It's it's <laughs> he gets himself in trouble. There are uh, some uh, murder that happened, and he's trying to figure out what happened, and uh, he's trying to survive pretty much. And I'm being like very vague because you would need to start from the beginning and read through. Because the more you get into the series, the less you can say about the series without spoiling something. <laughs> but yeah. I really enjoy it. I give it five stars because it is my one of my favorite series. So the next one I have is Golden Gate by James Ponty. It is the second book in the Sea Spy series. And this is for seconds in September. So I was happy to get another one of those in. But it also fits for a PK, the Bookie Monster, Spy vs. Spy. And so this here is where I say that, you know, I read a lot of middle grade books that you have to spend your disbelief because they are doing things that most kids their age wouldn't be doing. But this one feels middle grade. <laughs> In the My, My Vampire versus uh, Your Werewolf, I forgot to mention, but there's like a kid contemplating her life like she's 40 years old. And I was just like, what? <laughs> Here they act like kids. They get mad at each other. They <laughs> kind of fight among themselves Then everything, but they're also spies. But they also have a man and a woman who watches after them and takes care of them and everything. They're just kind of like one big happy spy family, though none of them are, like, related. Um, the guy, 
that everybody calls Mother. He uh, finds them. They're kind of oddball kids who uh, don't really have a good home life or a home. They're foster care, you know, things like that. And he takes them in, and they usually have some kind of unique reasoning why, like, maybe they're good at hacking into things, or they're very athletic, they've got, like, a genius mind and, and things like that, which is good for, you know, being a spy and stuff like that. And they all have, a, their names are for where he's found them. So you got, like, Sydney, Paris, um, Brooklyn, um, I can't remember what the other one's name is. But there's a couple of other ones and everything. And in this one, they're really all trying to help Mother because uh, his kids are missing. Well, his ex-wife has taken them and he's trying to find where they are. And it was kind of a secret project between him and Brooklyn. And Sydney was getting, and some of the other ones were getting a little bit aggravated that it seemed like he was favoring her. So then they all find out what is going on, and so then they're all wanting to help. But not only are they doing that, but there is, there was a man that was murdered. He's an ex-spy, and they're trying to figure out what happened because they find out that he might not have had a heart attack like they thought he might have been murdered. And so they are gallivanting around the country trying to solve that and be in the little spy cells and everything. And it's felt very middle grade and everything, even though, you know, you kind of kind of spent your disbelief for a little bit. But... It still felt me great, <laughs> and I give it four stars. And so the last book I have is A Very Woodsy Murder by Ellen Byron. I'm going to start this out with saying that one of my favorite series, Cozy Mystery series, is the Cajun Country series by Ellen Byron. Nothing is ever going to match that series that she makes. I think the Vintage Cookbook series... Or Vintage Kitchen or something. I think it's a Vintage Cookbook. Is close. It's probably my second favorite series of hers. If I do all of her series, it's probably my second favorite. It really took me a while to get to where I actually like the one that she writes under her other name, Maria Del Rico. And I'm sure eventually I will start to like this one. But it just didn't really hit off as good as I wanted it to. One of the reasons is the main character to me was a little bit whiny and a little annoying at times. She convinces her ex-husband, who is now her best friend, figure that out, and everything, to invest in a place in this little small town and everything. It's uh, the gold something place. But anyway, so they open up this place and it's like a little motel and they're working on it it's got a it needs a lot of work it got a lot of working to do and everything but they think it'll be well worth it and profitable they both kind of need an, a new you know break do something or whatever and so they go to the small town well their first guest that happens to be uh some kind of like movie guy producer writer and she used to work in that kind of thing. I can't remember her name for the life of me. But she used to work in that same industry and she knows him. She's not very happy that he's going to be the first one there. And they have problems with him. And you find out that he's been to that town. He kind of grew up in that town a little bit. He's, <laughs> people know him there. But he's a little bit of the golden boy for some people, not for others. And so, of course, something happens. And so they are a little bit prime suspects there for a while. So they got to try to figure out what's going on. Especially her ex-husband slash best friend because uh, he actually got an, an altercation with the guy and everything. So they're looking into this stuff and everything. And she says things like, you know, that, you know, it's a small town. She can think, think, you know, things like this happen there. It's like, do you not think just, just because it's a small town, they don't have crime? That, you know, people don't get murdered? People, <laughs> I mean, it's a small town. It doesn't mean it's perfect. Also, uh... She would catch herself saying kind of their little idioms and things like that and talking like them. And it was almost like, uh, you know, she didn't want to talk like them because she was better than them. At least that's how it came, kind of came off to me from a person that lives in a small town. It just kind of like was like, oh, really? <laughs> so uh, she said the word keister and she's like, oh my goodness, I'm starting to talk like them or whatever it is. And it's like... 
she and over and over again she would kind of you know make sure that you know you as the reader didn't know n knows that she don't talk like that or something i guess and i'm like you know what if you're just gonna live in this small town you're gonna start talking like I know I don't talk perfectly. I live in a small little hillbilly town and everything. And so I may say wash instead of wash. <laughs> and yeah, and I know when, even when I listen to this back that, oh, those words did not go together really well. But that's how I talk. That is me. And everything. And so you're going to start talking that way too if you hang out with those people. So, get used to it. <laughs> so, I just didn't hit it off really well with the main character. I didn't mind her uh, best friend, ex-husband guy. He was okay. And I liked some of the other uh, characters in it. And so, I think it has potential that I'll probably enjoy it a little bit more. But, for right now, I'll just have to uh, read another one to see how it goes. And, a lot of times, the first book really isn't the greatest. And everything so we'll see i gave it 3.5 stars i'll probably give it four stars on goodreads but yeah for me personally it's a 3.5 i wish they would let you do like half stars on there but yeah it was it was okay it's the first in the series the golden motel series and everything so that's it it's all the books that i read last week let's see what am i currently reading i'm currently reading a bite above the rest by christine I want to say Vernig or something like that, but you'll see it here. And um, I, I I like this one so far. It's very, it's got vampires, werewolves, and witches, and it's very middle grade. I like it. <laughs> and then um, I decided to listen to the Marlowe Murder Club because it was out on my Libby and somebody was waiting on it, and I didn't want them to have to wait a whole lot longer. And time was running out anyway so I decided to listen to that and I'm about about 60 something percent into that one I think I'm I should be able to finish it up pretty soon maybe even farther than that and stuff and it's really fun I'm liking that one the um, older ladies in that one are hoot and so it's a lot of fun and after that I only have one book that I need that I know I need to read and then everything else is whatever I want I've finished with the Everbloom Academy. I've read all my books for that. Um, I've read a couple of books for Spy vs. Spy, so I feel good about that. Um, and I've read a, a few vampire uh, middle grades and things like that. And I have one vampire book left, and that is um, When Darkness Falls by Shannon Drake. So I'll be reading that one this week after I get done with the Marlowe Murder Club, because it's audio too. And I'm buddy reading that with my friend Barb. And, and that's pretty much it. So it just... Whatever's on my Libby that I decide I want to uh, read that's out on my Libby and everything. Because a lot of times I neglect those and I end up having to either cancel them or move them around and stuff. And I'd like to get to some that are hanging out there. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let me know what was some of your favorite books that you read last week. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.